All right, so at this point, we have a pretty functional inventory system. We're able to use items. We can have them go away as we use them up. They're able to heal us. We can see the picture of the item. However, at this point, once our inventory becomes overly full, we have no way to drop these items in order to make more space. This is the last feature that I have planned for the system, so if there are other things you'd like to know how to do, please be sure to chime in in the comments. But for now, let's get started with dropping some items. So pretty much everything we're going to be doing is happening in the item slot script. So you can scroll all the way down to that method we made a long, long time ago called on right click. Essentially what we want to do here is simply create a new item which we will spawn beside the player every time you drop an item, and then we'll subtract that item from the inventory. So to do this, we're gonna start off by creating a brand new game object, which we'll call item to drop. And the item to drop is just gonna be equal to a brand new game object, and we'll give it the name of item name. So if it's a coffee, it'll be called a coffee. So now we're getting a new game object. Now we wanna make sure that this game object has our item script on it. So we'll call this version of the item script new item, and it's gonna be equal to, and now we're gonna summon up the item to drop, the item that we are creating, and we're just gonna add a new component to it. And in this case, we're gonna add the item component. So we'll now have our item script, which means it can hold data about what type of item it is. Now we'll just set that data. So we'll reference the new item script and we're gonna tell it that its quantity is equal to one. We're also going to access the new item script and let it know that its name, name is equal to item name. We're gonna give it a sprite to store and we'll also pass along its description. All right, with all that data stored, now what we need to do is make it so that this item is actually visual when it appears on the map. And so at this point, we're going to create and modify the sprite render. So to get started, we're going to create a new sprite render. We'll just call it SR for sprite renderer. And it's gonna be equal to item to drop dot, and we're just gonna add the component again, like we did last time, sprite renderer. Now that we have a sprite renderer, we can actually talk to it and set its sprite to be equal to the item sprite. We also wanna set its sorting order so that it appears in front of other items. Now, where you want this to appear for sorting order depends on you. For me, five gets it in front of my player and other things, so that's where I'm gonna set it. And another optional thing is if you have your visuals sorted into layers, you may need to also set your sorting layer name. Mine is part of a layer I created called the ground layer. If you're just creating a new game, you won't need these last two most likely as everything will appear on layer zero on the default layer. All right, with that set up, we now need to be able to interact with this. We need to add a collider. This is pretty simple. We're just gonna go item to drop, dot add component, and we're gonna add a box collider 2D. All right, we're almost done here, but now we need to set the location. So where do we want this thing to actually drop? So to do this, we're gonna go item to drop dot transform dot position is equal to, and in my case, I want to find the player. So I'm gonna type game object dot find, and I'm gonna use find with tag as my player changes in my game. You could just use a regular find if you only have one player, but I have different players who act as player in my game. So I'm gonna use the find with tag. And once you found the player, we're just gonna set the position to be equal to the transform position of the player. Now this will spawn the item exactly on top of the player. If you would like to have an offset so that it spawns a little bit to the right, say, you could add a new vector. And then, for example, give it a 0.5 value on the F on the X so that it spawns just a little to the right and the other two zero. And that would have the item spawn at the player's position plus just a little bit to the right. Now in my case, I actually downsize my items a little bit so they don't appear so large. So I'm also going to affect the size of mine. So I'm gonna go item to drop dot transform dot local scale. And I'm just gonna make mine equal to a new vector three. And because I make mine about half size, I'm gonna go with 0.5 F. Again, this step is purely optional if you wanna have your items a slightly different size than full sized. All right, the only thing really remaining at this point is to actually subtract the item when you drop it. And we don't need to write this code as we've already done it. If you scroll up here to our on left click, we have our this quantity minus one that updates our text and then checks to see if the slot is empty. We can just copy that entire line. And we can subtract the item. 
All right, let's save that and head back to Unity. All right, so now when we get in our game, we can collect a couple of items. And if we decide we don't like them, we can right click those items. You'll notice it went down each time. And now when I get back on the map, <laughs> you'll notice that it spawned on top of me and I immediately collected it again. That's a little problem. All right, to fix that problem, I'm just going to increase my offset a little bit. Let's put it one full unit away, not 12, one full unit away from our player. With that done now, when I collect the coffee and drop it back onto the map, you can see that it's appearing beside my player. It only looks like one, but there are in fact three there, so that when I collect, all three of them come back into my inventory. All right, that's working pretty nicely. This officially concludes our inventory system. That said, if there are any further features that you would like to see added in, please be sure to put those in the comments as I'd be happy to do another tutorial series on something like an equipment system or perhaps a skill tree. Just let me know what it is you'd like to see. All right, until next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.